What's up, YouTube? Robbie Vapes back again, and today we are checking out the V God RDTA, as well as a little secret I have in store for how to get the best wicking for your RDTAs. Will it work? Stay tuned and let's find out. That is right, YouTube. Today we are checking out the V God RDTA, as well as a little bit of a secret wicking tutorial. Honestly, I don't watch a lot of wicking tutorials, so this may have already been done a hundred times. I don't know. Stay tuned to find out. In fact, I'll actually have links in the description. Maybe a little pop-up little clicky thing here or somewhere over here where you guys can click to fast forward through all this rambling and get straight to the wicking tutorial if you want to. That being said, I'll leave a little note actually in here. I'm going to remind myself. So, Robbie Vapes, when you're editing this video, cut this part out and make sure that you put links in the description and maybe a little annotation or something somewhere on the screen to fast forward to the wicking material or to the wicking method. Make sure you do that, all right? This is from present Robbie Vapes to editing Robbie Vapes. I need you to do that for me, okay? And please, please make sure you take this out of the video so no one else sees this lame attempt at a reminder. Got it? All right, if you leave this in here, you are fired, just so you know. All right. For those of you who clicked on this video, not for the wicking, but instead want to hear the review on the VGOD RDTA, now is the chance. I'm going to talk a little bit about it in detail. We'll get down and dirty with it. I'll do the wicking on it as well because I just cleaned it out. And then we'll go back up top, take a couple of vapes on it, and I'll give my overall impression on whether or not I would choose to buy this again. All right, so let's talk about the pros and cons. Realistically, for the cons, there's only a couple big ones in my mind, and I'll talk about them more in the down and dirty section. But that being said, the biggest con, I think, in my mind, and it's, it's funny because this really shouldn't be a con, but it is, all right? I've complained, I, I'm guilty of this myself, I'm sure other reviewers have done this themselves, where they complain about getting so many little blue screwdrivers they don't know what to do with them. Well, it turns out this doesn't come with any screwdriver. And that's actually a big con for me, because I struggled to find a screwdriver that would fit these little grub nuts, and they're not really grub nuts, they're kind of like a combination of grub nuts and flathead screws, so it's, it's a weird mix of them. Um, it's not quite proprietary, but it's not quite not proprietary? I don't know. Anyways, the point is, it took me forever to find a screwdriver. I actually, I actually had to go out and buy one for, just for this RDTA to get the, the, the bolts unlocked from the post. And because of that, honestly, I'm giving it a big con. And it's funny because it came with so many other really cool things, which you'll see in the down and dirty section. But the one thing it was missing was a screwdriver. All right, moving on to the second con. And this is actually subjective I guess and it feels like maybe this isn't a con because the way the market's going a lot of RDTAs are going this way and that's side fill. Personally I'm not a big fan of side fill. I don't know why I just don't like it and I think side fill especially for someone like myself who uses the dropper bottles or the big 120 mil bottles they will not fit in this. In order to use side fill on this you will have to invest if you don't already have one a 30 mil unicorn bottle to put this in or, or to fill your juice in. The other option is, is of course the 30 mil bottles with those needle tips on it. Those are good as well, those will work. But any of the normal dropper style tips or the um, the 120 mils or bigger kind of thing with those weird caps on them, they will not fit and you will not be able to side fill this thing unless you have a unicorn bottle or something similar with a similar fill spout. Uh, or I guess pour spout. Anyways, the point is that's a little bit of a con for me and yet somehow more and more RDTAs are moving this direction. So I have to ask you the viewers, what do you think? Do you think that the side fill option is the way of the future, like the market seems to dictate? Or do you think that side fill is kind of an, just a, a gimmick sort of thing where it just makes it look cleaner a little bit on the top, which I will agree, it's a super clean device. And I guess that's one of the pros I have on this. It's very clean, very easy to build on. I love the posts on it. Yeah, the screws are a little bit shanky when it came to, um, to actually trying to build my first time. Once I got that screwdriver in, it was no issue at all. So other than that, I mean, Pros, beautiful design, really nice airflow on it, and it is bottom airflow, which actually I don't usually like bottom airflow, and I know I'm, I'm almost alone on that one, but I like side airflow. I love side airflow. Bottom airflow usually doesn't do it for me. In this case, it does. So if you are into side airflow like myself, and you're one of the last remaining side flow or side airflow type people, this might be able to convert you. It converted me a little bit. I still don't think I'd go out and get other bottom airflow devices, but this one with a with it being bottom airflow is actually acceptable in my mind. All right, other than that, um, leaking as far as that goes, if you have it stood up properly, it's not gonna leak, but if you do tilt on your side, and of course part of that comes into wicking, but even if you leave it on your side, for, and it's on its side for an extended period of time, it will leak, all right? And that's because the cotton's gonna get oversaturated 
even with the perfect wicking in there, which again, I'll show you what I do for my wicking later on in this video. Um, also, as far as pros go, the accessories it comes with is just limitless. I mean, you have so many choices for accessories, just not a screwdriver. You got a bunch of spare O-rings, you got some spare grub nuts, you got some uh, really nice cotton, which I love by the way, the flavor on it is awesome. It handles high wattage, which is even better. And it also comes with pre-built coils, which I actually haven't stuck in here yet. And the reason why is because I have a beautiful set from Nigel T. Nigel, if you're watching this, big shout out to you. You do some awesome work on coils. So um, one of my subscribers actually, and uh, honestly, it's a really good builder in general. So that's what I'm using on it right now. Apart from that, I think that's all I wanted to talk about before we get down and dirty with things with this thing. So let's get down and dirty, check it out close up, and see what you get in the box. All right, YouTube, we are down and dirty with the V God RDTA. Here's the packaging. It is a big, big box, and it just looks absolutely beautiful. Just take a quick guide around the box here, a little tour here. I will read the back in just a moment. You can see that really nice picture of it just down there. Beautiful, beautiful device. Bottom here, if you guys want to pause it, you can read that. Not intended for over 18 years of age. I saw that at the bottom. That is a good sign to have. And let's take a quick look at, at the back. All right, you can see here the specifications. We have a four mil pressure system capacity tank. Uh, basically what that means is it's got four mils of capacity. Anyways, moving on from there, we have the four hole velocity style deck post. Easy side fill design. Uh, I think that's arguable, but nonetheless, whatever. Uh, large fill hole for glass dripper and plastic bottle filling. That's kind of bullshit, but anyways, uh, say what you will. Direct bottom draw airflow. That is true. Stainless steel construction with gold plated copper posts. Absolutely. Looks stunning. And a drip tip shield. The total device measures 24 millimeters in diameter and 36 millimeters in height. What's inside the box? Well, you know what? We're just going to find out for ourselves by opening this thing up. Throw that off to the side. Let's check out the case itself. V God, a really nice finish. Kind of got that texture feel to it. I don't know if you guys can hear that. In fact, let me put up some microphone. All right. Hopefully, you guys heard that after that. Anyways, unzipping the little carry case comes with. Let's take a quick peek inside. Starting out, you agree with the actual RDT itself down here. We'll put that off to the side because we'll be looking at it more in depth. You also get a spare glass. You can see that right there. This one's a little bit more opaque, whereas the other one is definitely more clear. Just if you have a preference on not being able to see your juice, and if you really enjoy getting dry hits, I'm glad they put this little dark one in there as well. Anyways, moving on from there, you also have this V God Coil Fiends. The build kit, I haven't used the coils in here as I mentioned before, so I can't really comment too much on them. But we'll take a quick look inside, open this bad boy up. And I think it might have been right this way. There we go, it's starting to come off, perfect. All right, V-God, Coil Fiends, lift, if you insist. First thing you read with is some instructions as well on how to build, or how to put the build into the actual RDTA. Then you also have these really nice Clapton coils here. Beautiful little coils in there. I don't know if it'll focus. Please focus. There we go. You can see those in there. All right, let's remove this little thing. And here you have all this beautiful, beautiful cotton. All right, close that back up for now. Put it off to the side. Also in this little back flap here, if I can kind of rotate the case a little bit so it fits on the camera screen, we remove this. You agree with a little back pocket as well as this little baggie of extra screws, seals, and grommets. Hopefully you guys can see that. You also have a little, that one right there is actually your fell hole, just to give you an idea before we get up close. I don't know if you guys can see because of glare, but uh, it's really small here. So uh, good luck trying to fill anything other than a unicorn bottle. All right, let's put this off to the side. Let's take a quick look at the device itself, then we'll get into the wicking tutorial. All right, so here we have the device itself. This is the RDTA, the V-God, well-branded, very nice, very clean finish. As I mentioned, I just cleaned this myself. It was full of juice earlier, but it is no longer. To open up to get to the deck, we simply just pull this off. Here we can see the coils I have on there, courtesy of Nigel T. Thank you, Nigel. Get it to focus in there. Really nice coils in there. Again, they perform very well. I'm not very good at installing them clearly as they're a little bit crooked, but they do the trick and they still heat evenly. Uh, even from there, you can see the wicking holes just down there. Just in there is the wicking. And then here is your side airflow. 
And you guys can see that very, very tiny. Indeed, it is very difficult to fill if you are using anything other than a unicorn bottle. All right, moving on, we have the side, bottom side airflow, I should say, or more like bottom airflow on both sides. And this is not able to run in a single coil mode as far as single airflow goes. You are stuck with both airflow holes. So if that's an issue for you guys, maybe something to consider. Moving down here, we also can see the actual glass in there as well as the capacity or the tank and its capacity in there. We just move it around a little bit. You'll see that 510 connection sticks out nice and far. I still don't recommend using it on a hybrid style mech mod because I don't use hybrid style mech mods. And I don't think many people should. That's just personal opinion. If you came here to get a recommendation on hybrid style mech mods, you came to the wrong channel. Anyways, moving on from there, that's pretty much the tank itself. Very, very simple design. Again, give you a quick look at those grub screws. And you can see there, it looks like a flathead, but it's actually a little bit more proprietary than that. Um, and with that being said, it was very difficult to find a screwdriver that would fit in there. And again, my only complaint, just please include a screwdriver next time. Outside of that, beautiful design, beautiful tank. I mean, absolutely high quality device. This thing retails for $80, by the way, Canadian, which is awesome because usually the high end market in Canada is, you know, anything over the $100 mark. And there's really no gap in between the kind of affordable RDTAs or RDAs and then the high end ones as well. You know, the affordable ones going from $30 to $40 and the high end is typically in the excess of $100. So this actually has a very unique market share in that aspect that it does retail for only $80. All right, so that's pretty much it. You can see the little drip drip up top there. I mean, not too much else to look at. Let's get to the wicking tutorial. All right, we are back for the wicking tutorial. Here's what you'll need. Of course, your coils already installed, ideally. That's what I'm gonna do to save some time. You have your cotton over here as well, as well as on this side. Those are for the two wicks. You're also gonna need a pair of orange scissors. Yes, orange is, uh, my secret, if you don't use orange scissors, it just doesn't taste as good when you wick it. Uh, of course, I'm only joking, by the way. And uh, this lovely unicorn bottle as well. All right, so first step, you're gonna wanna actually wick this up as far as you would with a normal RDA and just very simple. But what I like to do is stretch it out just a little bit, just to extend it just a bit, just kind of wiggle it around a little bit, play around with it until it feels right, a little bit less condensed. And again, just a little bit more and just like so. Starting to pull apart a little bit now, and that is a good sign. All right, next thing you wanna do, you're gonna take this tip here, roll it all the way up like you would a normal RDA when you're threading it, and it's gonna have the same effect. So, all right, now that we have a little bit of a lead in the cotton, we're gonna push it through the coil itself, and I'm just gonna pull it through without trying to direct the cotton in the middle. All right, so it should be about like that. You're gonna want it, and the trick to this, if you want to look at the sides here, all right, and the key is you want to make sure it's not touching the bottom when it actually goes down. So this is a little bit too much. We're going to trim off the leads a little bit on each side, just a touch, just like that. And on the same side, or on the other side, we're going to do the exact same thing, trying to cut off that little lead piece we made, just like this. Much better. All right, so we've got our cotton should be nicely measured just like that and the next step we're going to do is actually just kind of twist around a little bit more and what we're going to do now is cut the lead portion in half almost we're going to cut about a third off of it all right so what you want to do is trim it just a little bit off the top just like uh, my hairline just a little bit off the top just like that and you want to create a little bit less of uh, of density around the cotton area for what's actually being inside the tank itself and that should be good if I can get this last little piece off. Looks good. So now you have kind of this bigger piece right here, and then it kind of just cuts out on the bottom portion of it. You can do the same thing on the other side as well. And just make sure you get a little bit off the top, just like so. All right, so we should have something similar to this. And that is pretty much your wicking leads. That's what's gonna wick at the bottom of this tank. So keep that in mind. You wanna make sure it wicks at the bottom of the tank. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. Get it like this, and I'll show you how to tuck it in here as well. All right, so when you're done, you should have something that looks somewhat like this. This is pretty messy and done pretty quickly, but you can kind of get the idea of it. What you wanna do is cram the middle with as much cotton as possible, and then cut the leads off a little bit more so it can wick better. And that's pretty much what you're left out with. Again, I cut about a third of this off on either side. 
Uh, I actually had to redo the wicking on both sides because I messed up and it was too short. But that should give you a rough idea of what it looks like. All right, now how do we get these cotton leads into the actual RDTA tank portion of this? Well, what you're gonna wanna do is take a small screwdriver, just like this one here, and what you're gonna wanna do is gently, but surely, just kinda push it in there. Just real easy without trying to wreck the inside middle portion. Just like that, and it should go in nicely. And if you cut it right, you'll notice you have a little bit of extra hanging up here. And again, that's what should happen is what you're gonna do is have the lead going down and then the extra portion just kind of sitting up top there. All right, so after several attempts, I'm finally fairly comfortable with my wicking job. I ended up having to switch from the stuff it came with to actually using some rayon here with some quick wicks. If you don't know what quick wicks is, here's the baggie right here. It's like five bucks, just pure rayon basically. Um, really nice stuff. This is the not so small version made for RDTAs and they have a small version made for RDAs. Uh, available at the Vape Depot, not to try and pimp them out too much, but anyways. So now that we have it, if I can get this back in camera, uh, all wicked up relatively nicely. What we wanna do now is juice the wicks. And the good thing with rayon is it's gonna juice relatively quickly. It is pretty absorbent, so it's good for what we're wanting to do with this one. I'm sure it's gonna drip all over the place, but that's just life. All right, so once those wicks are nice and saturated, what you're gonna to wanna to do is use that little tiny fill hole, stick the unicorn bottle in here, please no sexual references, and just start trying to fill it up. All right, so now that we've got it all wicked up, all juiced up, what do you say we take a backup top, have a couple of vapes on it, and let's see how our master wicking turned out in the end. All right guys, we're back up top with the V-God RDTA. To test it out, I've done the same thing on this rayon here. I'm vaping at 140 watts. We're gonna take a quick hit, show you what it looks like. That way you guys can see what it looks like when it's properly wicked. All right, here we go. Again, 140 watts. Hopefully you guys can see that. 140 watts, it's hitting no problem. No dry hits, no burn taste. We're gonna try one more time, maybe a couple more, actually do it a couple in a row, show you what it looks like, chain vape at 140 watts with this proper wicking job done. All right, let's do one more. Again, flavor is fantastic. The juice is wicking quickly. I'm not getting dry hits, I'm not getting burnt hits. So when you do this wicking tutorial properly, it does work, I promise you. I know it was super sloppy in the video, but believe me, if it's done right, it will work really nicely. One more hit. No issues there at all. Good flavor, good build, good wicking. Love it, it is working. All right, so with that being said, would I recommend this to other people? And I gotta say, if you follow the wicking tutorial and you do a better job than I did in the video, you're gonna get some good results from it, okay? Honestly, this thing is really good. The bottom airflow doesn't bother me at all. Usually bottom airflow is a huge issue for me in other devices. In this one, it's very smooth. It doesn't feel choppy or anything. It doesn't feel like the coil is not getting cooled properly. It is cooling nicely, and I will say that, and that is one thing I've found with other bottom fill, or bottom airflow devices, is that they tend to be a little bit warmer and you can't really get to the wattage you may wanna get on. For example, these coils really do perform better up above 120 watts plus, Typically, I would even say 160 watts. I think that's a sweet, sweet spot for these coils. And because of that, I just don't like using coils like this and some of the other RDAs out there that are bottom airflow because they don't cool it down enough. This one seems to do the job. It's doing well. The flavor's good. The overall design is beautiful. Honestly, I really like it. The only complaints I have, as I mentioned before, was the fact they didn't include a screwdriver, which is a bit of a piss off in my mind. I know it's a small thing, but seriously, Yes, everybody has a million blue screwdrivers around until you actually need one of them. And when I look for them, it turns out all my blue screwdrivers I had were star and not flathead, and I had to go out and get a special screwdriver just for that. This one on this one, the Coilmaster kit one, did not fit in those grub screws, okay? I had to go out and get a new screwdriver just for that grub, or just for that deck. So other than that, second issue is of course side filling. I don't like side filling. Honestly, it's a big downside for me. For whatever reason, I just I use bigger bottles, so it's kind of a piss off. Thankfully, I have a unicorn bottle on hand I can use. If I didn't, I would be even more pissed off. 
but if you are going to get this, make sure you have your hands on a unicorn bottle. The two things I would have liked to have seen, yes, it's an $80 value, or it's an $80 buy, which I think is great value for what you get, but I would have liked to have seen them include maybe a unicorn bottle so you can fill it easily right out of the box, and you don't have to go out and get one if you don't have one. And secondly, of course, is a screwdriver for the same reason. So you don't have to go out and get one to find one that fits. Other than that, I do recommend this thing if you are looking for an RDTA a little bit in the higher market. Uh, I haven't tried the combo. I've heard very good things about the combo, but I haven't tried it myself personally. Sort of the ones I have tried, the Limitless, the Avocado, uh, the Theorem, and the Yokozuna, and then this one as well. This one does take the cake. Um, it would have been the Yokozuna if they would have fixed that one issue. If you don't want to know what I'm talking about, make sure you go check out my Flops 2016 video where I explain why it was such a big flop. But other than that, the B-God definitely takes cake for the best RDTA I've personally used. And again, that doesn't include the combo, which I've heard very, very good things about. Outside of that, that's pretty much all I want to talk about for today. Thank you guys all so much for watching and sitting through that really bad wicking tutorial. And I will see you guys next time. Until then, happy vaping, YouTube.